Welcome to a new program about creation and creationism, hosted by Alpha Omega TV. Our guest today is Mr. John Mackay, geologist. Welcome, sir. International Director of Creation Research Australia. It's good to be here in Romania. Thank you so much. Mr. Mackay, I've been witnessing scores of discussions on facts or faith, facts and faith, um, I've been accused, some others were accused, of doing religion when we're supposed to do science. Science deals with facts, religion doesn't. Could you please help me sort out this? Uh, is okay. there any difference? Do they help one another, exclude one another? Well, you've, you've um, certainly come onto a very important issue because right at the end of last year, the American Science Teachers Association published a statement about what science was. And basically, to give it in a nutshell, they said it excludes God, has no reference to any God, uh, and therefore it's naturalistic, it's naturalism. And uh, so they've said, there's the line, on this side there's science, on that side there's religion, on this side there's faith, a uh, fact rather, on that side there's faith, and the two have nothing to do with each other. Now, it's a popularly believed statement, but it turns out to be totally false. Let me illustrate it to you. Um, I got here in the studio before you for this program, correct? Yes. I watched you come in and sit down. Mm -hmm. Now, you sat down by faith. I can prove it. You see, I did not see you bend down to check if any of the cameramen had taken a hacksaw to cut through the legs of the chair. You didn't, did you? No, I didn't. So therefore you assumed or you believed that the chair was safe to sit in, correct? Yes. Okay, now wherever you assume something or you believe it or you hope it's true, the word faith comes into existence because you did not check the facts. But now that you've sat down by faith, there needs to be another point made. It's not your faith which is holding you up. It's the fact that the chair is worth having faith in. Now you see, the Bible has an interesting point about this whole issue. And in fact, the more you study science, the more you begin to realize that fact and faith are actually like that. And anybody who tries to separate them is lying to you. What they've really done is join the facts to a different faith. Now, um, the impact of the Bible in the history of scientific thinking has been profound. Let me just bring a couple of things. Being a geologist, I like to dig up fossils. You don't know what fossil is, don't you? Well, a fossil is... Um, well, look, let me give you one and you can start again. Any suggestions as to what kind of fossil that is? <coughs> well, an old one. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, let me make it plain for you. Okay. F-O-S-S is an old word, a Latin-based okay. word, right? Yes. It means whole. Mm -hmm. And I-L is what's in the hole. So, guess what you've got to do to usually find fossils? Uh, let me guess. Uh, you dig a hole, you dig a hole, and you grab the That's fossil. Right. Very good. And the rest is a story for children's textbooks. <laughs> you see, we dig up a trilobite like you've got there, okay. and then they proceed to tell a story about millions and millions of years ago. Mm -hmm. And not once do they tell you that the word trilobite was invented in 1771 by somebody who was firmly convinced the world had been created. Hmm. Now, do you see why it's called a trilobite? Uh, I guess because it has uh, three lobes. Three lobes. Simple, there isn't it? Is. You see, mm -hmm. it, it's, geology is a really down-to-earth subject. Yeah. It's the big words that confuse people. And if you can come to grips with the fact that anybody called this a three-lobed creature, yeah. But when you learn to say trilobite, they pay you a lot more, <laughs> right? And that's the only difference. Yeah. It, it's really a simple yeah. subject. Okay, so there's one fossil. I'd better get out another one. Because we don't want to lose track of the fact that when people tell you science is over there, religion is over here, evolution is over there, creation is over here, fact is over there, and faith is over there, they are ignorant of the very nature of science. All right, now... Here's one of my favourite fossils. Mm. Do you know what it is? 
It seems to be a tooth. A tooth. Quite a big word. Rather big. Uh, you'd probably have a good dentist bill if your tooth was that big. Oh, yeah. But you see, to you and I, it's so e o e e you know, evident, self-evident, obvious that this is a, some sort of a bug and that's some sort of a tooth. Yes. And we never <clears throat> find out that it wasn't that obvious at all. You see, we know what shark this comes from today because this version of shark still lives in Australia, but it's only got teeth this big. Oh. So sharks have actually gone downhill. But get back to the main question. How did we find out this was a shark's tooth? Answer, there was a fellow who became a bishop in the church. Mm -hmm. His name in Latin was Steno. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are viewers who are watching and you do geology, you'll know about Steno's principles of superposition. Mm -hmm. He wrote the three basic ground rules for geology. Very rarely do they find out he became a bishop. Mm -hmm. And his whole framework was Christian, creation-based, and Noah's flood-based. Okay, now, what's all that got to do with shark's teeth? Well, he was the fellow who figured them out. Mm -hmm. You see, in his day, here's what people believed. You see, they saw them like that. And then they thought, aha. Oh, no. It looks like a tongue. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so they called them tongue stones. Oh. And the big ones became daddy tongue stones. And the little ones became mummy tongue stones. And the little tiny ones became baby tongue stones. And it made a wonderful story. It's so hard to believe because you and I see shark's tooth. Yeah. We see fossil. They saw tongue stone. So we do have to ask a question. These were not stupid people. How did they reach that conclusion? And to find the answer, you have to go back and say, why do we call some school buildings gymnasiums? Do you know, by the way? Uh, it has something to do with Greek. Greeks. Yes. Okay, so the Greek influence yes. dominated education for thousands of years. So question, what did the Greeks think? Answer, well, we know what faith they had. In fact, do you remember how many gods they had? Something like zillions. <laughs> yeah, they had a god for Monday, a god for Tuesday, a god for Wednesday, a god for the ball game, a god for McDonald's, and one left over just in case, right? <laughs> just to make sure just to make sure happy. that everybody's happy. Yeah, they didn't want to offend anybody. Now, do you remember what their gods were like? They're kind of like Superman, Batman's today. The... Yeah, Superman yeah. crossed with Batman <laughs> yeah. crossed with the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's about it, right? Yeah. And so you'll find that their gods were just us growing big. Oh yeah. And if you could get drunk, they could get drunker. And if you could get angry, they could get angrier. And if you could play tricks, they could outsmart you any day of the week. I bet. Okay, now put that in your mind. And you're Joe, the, the Greek fisherman. And you go down and you dig up a rock. Yep. And you split it open. And in the rock, you find that. A fish. A fish. Mm. Okay. Now, to you, it's obvious. Yeah. It was obvious to Joe the Greek fisherman. Mm -hmm. But you see, he had a set of glasses on that was framed by his religious thinking. Mm -hmm. And everybody sees the facts through a set of glasses. And here's what Joe the Greek fisherman did. He said, I'm not stupid. Fishes don't live in rocks. Fishes live in the sea. Nice try, Zeus, <laughs> but you haven't fooled me this time. Pull the other leg. Oh, those gods, they've got a good sense of humor. <laughs> and they wrote down in their books that the fossils were put in the earth by the gods to play tricks on us. So, if the gods are playing tricks on us, I would have guessed there goes the same thing. It really <laughs> does look that way. That's exactly right. Okay, so you just make it up as you go yeah. along. And so because the Greeks had the wrong religion, mm -hmm. they could never come up with the right science. You see, I, I keep telling people that if you don't ask the right questions, don't expect the right answers. And if you only have the wrong questions, you'll get nowhere near the right answers. 